start lecture 2-3 on the node voltage method. This content is from sections 4.1 and 4.2 of your textbook. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to briefly and clearly explain in your own words what a node is as well as how to implement the node voltage method. You should be able to identify nodes in a circuit as well as to be able to apply the node voltage method in order to find voltage, current, and power in an electric circuit. So first, let's talk about a definition. A planar circuit is a circuit that can be drawn on a plane with no crossing branches. The no voltage method can be used on planar and non-planar circuits. However, the next topic we're going to talk about, which is the mesh current method, cannot be used on non-planar circuits. Please see figures 4.1 and 4.2 in your textbook for examples of both. Now let's look at some other terms that are used to describe a circuit. The first vocabulary word is node. We've actually discussed node before when we were talking about series and parallel. Recall that a node is the meeting point where two or more circuit elements join together. So if we look at this figure to the right, let's identify all of the nodes. The first node is at the bottom. And it's where the 10 volt 5 ohm, 10 ohm, and 2 amp come together. The next node is at the top left, the meeting point of the 10 volt and the 1 ohm resistor. The next node is the meeting point for the 1 ohm, the 2 ohm, and the 5 ohm resistor. And the final node is at the meeting point of the 2 ohm, the 10 ohm, and the 2 amp current source. There are four nodes in the circuit. It is very important that you not count the dots. The dots indicate a connection point, but not necessarily the nodes. So for this circuit, there are four nodes. An essential node is where three or more circuit elements come together. So now looking at our original circuit, let's count the essential nodes. The meeting point at the bottom. The 10 volt is not because there's only two elements meeting between the 10 volt and the one ohm. However, where the 1 ohm, the 2 ohm, and the 5 ohm come together, that is an essential node. And where the 2 ohm, the 10 ohm, and the 2 amp current source come together, that is an essential node. So this circuit has three essential nodes. A trace of adjoining basic circuit elements with no element included more than once is defined to be a path. So if we look at this second circuit, there are many paths. One of the paths would be the connection from the 10 volt to the one ohm. Another path would be the 10 volt, the one ohm, and the five ohm. Another path would be the five ohm, the two ohm, and the 10 ohm. Another path could potentially be the two ohm, 10 ohm and the two amp. There are many paths in the circuit. A path that connects exactly two nodes is called a branch. So an example of a branch would be the 10 volt source, which connects the bottom node to the top volt. Another branch would be the one ohm resistor or the five ohm resistor, the two ohm resistor, the 10 ohm resistor, or the two amp. Typically when I count branches, I'm counting the circuit elements. And since we have one, two, three, four, five, six circuit elements, we would say that there are six branches. An essential branch is a path which connects two essential nodes without passing through an essential node. Since the 10 volt no, the node at the top of the 10 volt is not essential, we could not say that that's an essential branch. However, we do have essential branches for the 5 ohm, the 2 ohm, the 10 ohm, and the 2 amp. So there would be 1, 2, 3, 4 essential branches. A loop. A loop is a path whose last node is the same as the starting node. Looking at the bottom right circuit, which is a copy of the top two, how many loops do you think you have? Students sometimes mix up mesh and loop. So I want to make this very clear. There are actually six loops. One, two, three, four, five, and then the entire circuit would be the sixth loop.
Finally, mesh. Meshes are the loops that do not close any other loops. Meshes are sometimes called the windows or the openings of the circuit. There are actually only three meshes. The three meshes would be this center one here, that's mesh one with the 10 volt, the one ohm and the five ohm. This one here with the three, five ohm, the two ohm and the 10 ohm would be mesh two. And the one with the 10 ohm and the two amp would be mesh three. So there are three meshes, but there are six loops. Recall that Kirchhoff's current law states that the sum of the currents into and out of a node must equal zero. The node voltage method is actually based upon KCL and it's used to analyze a circuit to independent simultaneous equations in order to find node voltages. The number of equations required is based upon the branches and nodes in the circuit. If there are n nodes in a circuit, then it is possible to derive n minus one equations using KCL and it's possible to derive the number of branches minus the quantity n minus one equations using KVL where n is for the nodes and b is for the branches. Note that this equation can also be written in terms of only essential nodes where the number of KCL equations would be n e minus one where n e stands for the number of essential nodes and the number of KVL equations would be the number of essential branches minus the quantity n e minus one. So now let's determine how many KCL and KVL equations we would need for the following circuit. The first thing to do is to identify the nodes. Remember the nodes are the meeting points of the circuit elements. So I'm going to circle the nodes. There's one at the bottom, one at the top left, one in the middle, and one on the right. There are actually four nodes and they're all essential because at least three elements meet at each one of them. So there are four essential nodes. There are six loops, one, two, three, and then taking two loops at a time, four, five, and in the entire circuit. So there would be six loops. Meshes are the windows of the circuit. So there are one, two, three meshes. How many essential branches? Well, since all of our nodes are essential, all of our essential branches would be the circuit elements. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six essential branches. So now to answer the question about KCL, the number of KCL equations would be the number of nodes minus one which is equal to three. The number of KVL equations would be the number of branches minus NE minus one. So that would be six minus four minus one. So there would be three KVL equations. So the no voltage method is a systematic approach to identifying voltages, currents, and power in a circuit. So here are the steps to implement the node voltage method. As long as you're very systematic about the way that you do this, you shouldn't have any problems. Step one, make sure you have a neat layout of the circuit with no branches overlapping. Typically you will be provided this on most of your assignments. Step two, mark one of the essential nodes, the reference node. Typically the one with the most branches near the bottom of the circuit. In this class, I always make the ground node the bottom of the circuit. It's easy to remember because we stand on the ground, you put it at the bottom. It's not wrong to make another node the reference node. However, to be consistent in this class, we always use the bottom as ground. Step three, the node voltages are always defined as a voltage rise from ground to the non-reference node. We label those nodes in some systematic fashion from left to right, such as V1, V2, V3, VA, VB, VC. Step five, draw the currents leaving each label node if it is not given. This is an assumption we make in order to solve the problem. We know that all the currents will not leave the nodes. However, it gives us consistency when making the equations and I'll discuss that more when we do an example. Step six, 
Use Ohm's law to write the KCL equations at each of the non-reference nodes. Remember, KCL equations are always the number of nodes minus one. You never ever do KCL at the ground node. Step seven, solve the simultaneous system of equations by either using your calculator, by using Crane's rule, matrix manipulation, you could do graphing, addition, subtraction, substitution, any of the methods you've learned for solving simultaneous equations. And finally, step eight, find any unknown values by using the node voltages, such as power, current, etc. Okay, let's get started. So we have a circuit here. The first thing we're going to do is label the nodes. I always start with ground first. So I label the bottom, and here's our ground symbol. Remember, the reference node ground is always zero volts. And then I label the rest of the nodes. So we have a node here where four elements come together and we'll name this node VA. Then we have a node here where four elements come together. We'll name this node VB. And over here we have a node where four elements come together and we'll name this node VC. The next assumption we make is that if the current is not given, we assume it's leaving at each node. So when I'm at VA, 20 milliamps is given, nothing to do with that, but I'm going to assume the current is leaving out through the 2K, out through the 4K, and out through the 1K. When I get to VB, I assume the current's leaving. Regardless of what I put for VA, I assume the current's leaving at VB. So I'll show the current out through the 4K, out through the 2K, and out through the 4K, there's nothing to do for the five milliamps. When I get to VC, I do the same thing. I have a 10 milliamp and a five milliamp, but I assume the current is leaving up through the 1K at the top and to the left through the 4K on the left. And now we're ready to write the equations. We're going to have three KCL equations because we have four nodes. So I do KCL at VA. If I assume current out is positive and current in is negative, then I would have the current through the 4K plus the current through the 2K plus the current through the 1K resistor equals 20 milliamps. A good equation, but not very helpful. It would be better to write this equation in terms of the node voltages by using Ohm's law. Since we assume the current's leaving, we assume higher potential to lower potential because resistors always obey the passive sign convention. So to find the current of the 4K resistor, that would be the voltage on the left, VA, minus the voltage on the right, VB, divided by four kilo ohms. Remember, that's Ohm's law. For the two kilo ohm resistor, that would be VA minus zero over 2K. For the 1K resistor, that would be VA minus VC over 1K, and it's still set equal to 20 milliamps. So now let's talk about why I always assume it's leaving. This is a way for you to check your work. If you always assume the current is leaving, then your equation when you're on node A is going to be VA minus, VA minus, VA minus, or the coefficient on the VA terms will be positive. So a quick check would be, are all the VAs positive? Yes. A common mistake students make here is to willy-nilly or arbitrarily select in and out, and then they make a mistake and they'll put a VA or VB or VC first when it should have been second and vice versa. If you always assume it's leaving, if you're consistent, you won't run into that kind of trouble. So now let's do KCL at VB. KCL at VB, I now assume the current's leaving at VV, so I'll have VB minus VA over 4K for the left 4 kilo ohm resistor, plus VB minus VC over 4K for the right 4 kilo ohm resistor, plus VB over 2K for the resistor at the bottom. And the current coming into that node is equal to 5 milliamps. So now, KCL at VC. 
The current of the 4 kilo ohm resistor would be VC minus VB over 4K. The current of the 1 kilo ohm resistor would be VC minus VA over 1K. And now I have current going out and in. So the current going out is going to be plus 5 milliamps. And the current coming in is going to be equal to 10 milliamps. We now have three equations and three unknowns. So let's solve this system of equations. There are several ways to solve this system of equations, including Maple, MATLAB, your calculator, like I said, graphing, Kramer's rule substitution. I typically will just give the students an example of something you can do in order to solve the system. In most calculators, they have matrix manipulation. So what you could do is create a matrix. In this case, it would be a three by four matrix where the rows are equations one, two, and three, and the columns are the coefficients on the variables, VA, VB, VC, and the constant on the right side of the equal sign. So in this case, the coefficient on VB would be one over 1K plus one over 4K plus one over 2K. The coefficient on VB would be negative 1 over 4K. And the coefficient on VC would be negative 1 over 1K. And the constant would be equal to 20 milliamps. For the second equation, the coefficient on VA is negative 1 over 4K. The coefficient on VB is 1 over 4K plus 1 over 4K plus 1 over 2K. The coefficient on VC is negative 1 over 4K, and that equals 5 milliamps. The third row of the matrix in the third equation would be negative 1 over 1K, negative 1 over 4K for VB, positive 1 over 4K plus 1 over 1K for VC, and the constant is 5 milliamps. It's 5 milliamps because I have subtracted 5 milliamps from both sides of the equation. So at this point, it really depends on the calculator you have, whether you have an 83, 84, 89, or an Inspire, the technique to solve the system is a little different. So I recommend that you go and look at the resources I have provided on the Moodle course website to determine how exactly to get the solution to this. But I'll go ahead and give you the answer so that you can check your work. So VA is equal to 36.43 volts. VB is equal to 23.57 volts and VC is equal to 37.86 volts. So now let's see, how do we use this information on a power table? So one thing you would do is label those values on your original circuit. So this top left node I now know is 36.43 volts. That middle node is 23.57 volts and this right node is 37.86 volts. So now, the currents on the power table. Well, the 20 milliamp and the 5 milliamp and the 10 milliamp, you just copy down their values. I would do that first. It's easy. Get your confidence up, right? Then let's do some voltages. Since the 20 milliamp is tied between 36.43 volts and ground, I know that the voltage across it is 36.43. Since the 10 milliamp is tied between 37.86 and ground, I know that its voltage is 37.86. However, the 5 milliamp is tied between 37.86 and 23.57. So if you think about putting a voltmeter across that current source, it would read the difference between the two potentials. Therefore, its voltage should be 37.86 minus 23.57, which is 14.29. Now let's do the power for our current source. Since 36.43 is at a higher potential than ground, which was zero volts, the current goes into the negative and out of the positive. It's delivering power and it's delivering 728.6 milliwatts. The 5 milliamp, the 23.57 is at a lower potential than 37.86 because 37.86 is greater than 23.57. Since the current goes into the positive and out of the negative, it absorbs power 
and it absorbs 71.45 milliwatts. The 10 milliamp, 37.86 is at a higher potential than ground. So the current goes into the negative, out of the positive. 10 times 37.86, it delivers 378.6 milliwatts. Everything else is a resistor. So I already know it has to absorb power. Let's figure out the values. The two kilo ohm resistor is in parallel with the 20 milliamp. They've got the same voltage. 36.43. And this should have been 43 over here as well. Okay. The four kilo ohm resistor is between 36.43 and 23.57. So when you subtract those two, it has a voltage of 12.86. The two kilo ohm is between 23.57 and ground, so it has a voltage of 23.57. The four kilo ohm, the second four kilo ohm, is between 37.86 and 23.57. It's also in parallel with the five milliamp, so it should have the same voltage, 14.29. And the one kilo ohm is between 36.43 and 37.86. So when you subtract those two, the one kilo ohm has a voltage of 1.43. Now that I have voltage and I have resistance, I can use Ohm's law to get current. So the currents are 18.22 milliamps for the two kilo ohm, 3.22 milliamps for the four kilo ohm, 11.79 milliamps for the two kilo ohm, 3.57 milliamps for the four kilo ohm and 1.43 milliamps for the one kilo ohm. They all absorb power. So you multiply voltage and current to get that. The two kilo ohm absorbs 663.75 milliamps. The four kilo ohm absorbs 41.41 milliamps. The two kilo ohm absorbs 277.89 milliamps. The four kilo ohm absorbs 51.01 milliamps and the one kilo ohm absorbs 2.04 milliamps. The sum of the left column is 1,107 million watts and the right column is 1,107 milliwatts. Notice that the power unit should have been watts for both of these. I think I was saying amps, sorry. And the power table does check, so we have confirmed that this circuit obeys the law of conservation of energy. Okay, let's try one more. So remember, first step is you label the ground. And then we name the nodes from left to right. So the meeting point of the 10 amp, the 3 ohm and the 2 ohm, we'll call it V1. The meeting point of the 3 ohm, the 4 IX, and the 4 ohm is going to be V2. And the meeting point on the right node is going to be V3. Notice that this one has a current controlled current source. Whenever you have a dependent source in a circuit, you're going to have a constraint equation. So what you're going to see is that we're still going to do KCL like we did before, but I will then have an additional equation for the constraint. Why is this necessary? because now I have four unknowns instead of three. I have the three KCL equations to find V1, V2, and V3, but the constraint will help me to get IX, the fourth variable. So let's do KCL at V1 first. I assume the current is leaving through the three ohm and the two ohm. So I have V1 minus V2 over three plus V1 minus V3 over two that equals the current coming in, which is 10. Then I have KCL at V2. Current's leaving at each node. So for the three ohm, I have V2 minus V1 over three. Notice that for the four ohm, I have a choice. I could either write IX or I could write V2 over four. Since I'm gonna have a constraint in a minute that has the relationship there, I'll put V2 over four plus V2 over four, 
that equals the current coming into the node, which is 4ix. The third KCL equation at V3 is V3 over 6 plus V3 minus V1 over 2 plus, because all the currents are leaving, 4ix, and that equals 0. So the constraint equation is a relationship between the labeled node voltages and the controlling variable. Since V2 is the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor, and Ix is the current through the 4 ohm resistor, the relationship between these two values is that Ix is equal to V2 over 4. And now we have a system of equations which we can solve. So when you solve this system of equations, you'll have V1 is 80 volts. V2 is negative 64 volts. And V3 is 156 volts. And remember, our reference is still ground at the bottom, which is zero volts. The system of equations will also yield that Ix is equal to negative 16 amps. So let's see how we use this information to find some values on the circuit. So the question asks us to find the voltage for the current sources. Well, since the 10 amp is tied to ground, the voltage is 80 volts with respect to ground, positive on top, negative on the bottom. The voltage for the dependent source for Ix is going to be 156 minus negative 64, which is 220 volts. Since the higher potential is on the right, that's the voltage with respect to negative on the left and positive on the right. What if we wanted to find the power for each of these current sources? Well, the power for the 10 amp current source would be 10 times 80, which is 800 watts. That would be delivered because the higher potential is on the top, therefore the current goes into the negative and out of the positive. What about the power for the dependent current source? the 4ix. Well, for this one, the higher potential was on the right and the lower potential was on the left. So since that obeys the passive sign convention, I put a positive sign on the power formula and it's positive voltage times current. Remember, the voltage is 220. The current is 4ix. So that would be 220 times 4 times negative 16 which gives me negative 14,080 watts. But remember what the negative sign means. When power is, the numeric value for the power is less than zero, that means delivered as well. So that means that the dependent current source is delivering 14,080 watts. This concludes our introduction to the node voltage method in lecture 2-3.